Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our life. The title of this message is Sleeping with a Dumbbell. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode 10 of 14. Men, spend time with a woman. Bring her along first. We tend to have an auto switch that when turned on, our bodies go into launch mode like the shuttle. I say to always put her first, because if you are like most men, we only last as long as we are supposed to, which is to say, it's not very long. Now, I won't go into the foreplay options, as I think you should work that part out on your own. But I leave this section with the section within a section to this. I am not an expert in this area, so if you have a better idea that's working in your relationship, and you both agree that they are working, then stay with the program. Now, women, I'm not talking about being quiet and submissive regarding this statement because you are afraid you might hurt his feelings. Nope, that is a weapon set against you, and the devil will use that as an opportunity of temptation to trip him up. Speak up kindly and encourage one another in this fight. And yes, sex is absolutely a fight. Just look at the levels of sex anything that is being propagated all over the entire planet. You win the battle of sin when you come together with your kin. And I'm talking about with your husband or wife. Don't make it weird. I just wanted it to rhyme. One of the most powerful weapons of Christianity is the strength and health of your intimacy, your sex life. So in the event that you don't believe that I am a subject matter expert on this topic, I assure you that I can speak to many struggles in this area, both of personal experience as well as working with others on the matter. Some of these struggles include, but are not limited to the power of outside influences, your dad or your mom abuses, and the power of sin itself as it relates to lust. If you do not pay attention to this section and to your family's health as it relates to intimacy, then your neglect will be akin to swallowing a grenade and somehow thinking that it will simply pass through without arming along the journey. If ignored and not well managed, then you not only go to bed with a dumbbell, but wake up with one as well. Again, the dumbbell represents unnecessary weight that we carry and not the human we married. Genesis 3:24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. I must have mentioned soul ties somewhere along this important relational journey, and so it bears repeating, and also going deeper on what it is. Soul ties occur because you become one flesh with another of the opposite sex, and when you have sex with them. Yes, this is on purpose because God set it up this way. The strength of a soul tie assists in your acting as a single unit as you journey through life together. It is a love bonding agent, spectacularly designed by our Father. He cannot keep this from happening, regardless of what measures you take. Love or lack of love does not prevent this from happening. You can get some idea in the next example. Although rudimentary as an example, it is nonetheless what helped me to understand the soul tie event. If you take two pieces of different colored clay and wrap them together and then pull them apart, you will see that trace amounts of clay have detached and adhered to one another. So now, for example, you have red on green and green on red. Sex imprints you on and in each other. Voila, soul tie. Multiply this with all the other partners that you may have had, and perhaps now you can see why this area of your life is an absolute mess. Fornication, adultery, rape, incest, child abuse, prostitution, bestiality, orgies, and a host of other similar behaviors violates the soul tie intention and creates a world of curses and messes all along the way. Now, some of these events happen to you uninvited, and God, once you have been authentically born again and marked for him, makes a way to break the soul ties. We will get to that hopefulness later. So now, but, but, this bear is repeating. If you have been a roaming dog sleeping with anyone, willing to fail with you, then you have attached your soul to them. Yep, if it was 30 women, then you were attached to all of them. Now, I'm not a math guy, but my thought on the matter leads me to think that if each one of them also slept with 30 other people, then you are also joined to those in whom they have slept with. Is it any wonder why our sex lives as Christians are so difficultly screwed up? But you say, when God saved you, all of that stuff is under the blood and is no longer an issue. Yep, no. 
If salvation is the end-all, be-all, instantaneous event, then sin would wither away and die at the door of the born-again experience, and we could, as Christians, carry on his work unhindered from the devil, sin, or its consequences. Righteousness is immediate and a journey at the same time. Another example is that you have been saved and being saved and will be saved, all at the same time. I may have just bounced off the ocean floor on that example. So if you want to strengthen your marriage and improve your sex life, then you will need to break the soul ties. There is much in the way of how to do this, so I will not go into the process here. Suffice to say, I've gone through it myself and have helped others along the way. And it works. The blood is richly deep towards those who love and serve him. If you do not go through the process of breaking these soul ties, then you can be assured that you are taking all of your past acquaintances with you to bed, along with your spouse. I know, gross, right? You better get a bigger bed. But then that is why God said don't do it. Ignorance of the soul tie process doesn't break the curse. It's a spiritual law that must be dealt with. Mark 10, 6, 8. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Some of us in the fivefold ministry don't like to touch on the subject of sex, because, as I've stated already, many, many people struggle with one or more aspects of intimacy and sex. The sex topic makes many believers uncomfortable because of their lack of godly knowledge of the subject. So the fivefold ministers consider the subject so uncomfortable that they, we, leave the body of Christ ignorant. All the while, they burn in passion, struggle with getting together on a regular basis, have unhealthy thoughts about intimacy, struggle with pornography, end up in adulterous affairs. And yes, I'm going to go there, men. Struggle even to satisfy their wives, which is equally as important as your own satisfaction. Station break. So many of the topics discussed in this message, if you set out and do them, to work on them, they will improve your intimacy, will improve your emotional connection. This is important to women, as I have been told by my significant other, so in as much as possible you will need to work on all of the relational topics as they relate to each of your situations. This will be a good start in improving the sex part of your relationship, which, when healthy, improves the overall relationship. It can stop the addictions to pornography and watching inappropriate stuff. It can curb the attractions to images of others on social media. Coming together regularly is a type of warfare that you will need to fight, nowhere else. Now to another station break, if indeed you can have two in an episode. Marriages break up because of the neglect of sex. Divorce occurs because of the sin of adultery. Listen, many problems arise in relationships because of an ill-managed sex life. Mood swings. Oh, such a destructive force, and all because of sex neglect. Okay, so I will hear your excuses now. Oh, wait, there are none. Nope, not none. I am shy. Nope. I am too sensitive about my body type or condition. Nope. Well, I am too old. Nope. Take a pill and shut up. I am too busy. Nope. So is the devil, and he may be the one who has you too busy. Well, I don't love him anymore. Nope. Love is a service in love and faith, not an emotion. You are now joined together. You will see God's thoughts in it shortly. The kids are always bursting in the room. Nope, lock the door. Go in the garage or car. I just had a baby. Well, then for a season, be sure he is taken care of. And when you are ready, you can let him know. And waste not another minute getting to it. I'm too fat and ugly. You may laugh, but oh, we have them among us. And they need our help with their stupid arguments drifting around in their head as much as we do. So nope, nope, nope. We live with other people in whom we share a small space with. Indians used to live in teepees and had no problem having babies. Eskimos, babies. Cavemen, cave babies. Sasquatch, well, you get the point. You must manage the front line of your sex or you will be trampled. And done so willingly because of your silly, stupid arguments as to why you neglected each other in the first place. Look around with eyes wide open. Look at what's on in social media, such as Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. TikTok, Instagram, Messenger, Snapchat, YouTube, Placey, TV, in the movies, on billboards, magazines. It's an endless attack on humanity and our intimacy and sex life. These strongholds are designed to destroy both the healthy concept of sex and marriage. 
In fact, very little of any of this stuff promotes the institution of marriage. Billions of people are negatively affected by the unrelenting stream of video and images. It's like there's a prevailing thought that the world deserves to see me naked and in its many forms. This stuff has been one of the greatest struggles in my own life. I guess this is why God thought that I should chat about it. Well, that's it for today. And yes, there are many, many other sources that have smut images, and I judge not the industry or the people trapped in it. They wouldn't exist if there wasn't an end user. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from them. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, still and destroy the works of the enemy. It creates space for the light of life to shine through in people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.